Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. And are you there, amen? Okay, let us read this responsively. But I determined this with myself, that I would not come again to you in heaviness. And I wrote the same unto you, lest when I came, I should have sorrow from them to whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all, that my joy is the joy of you all. But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part that I may not overcharge you all. Let us uh, read this all together. So that contrary wise, she ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such an one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Father, bless us, Lord, as we study thy word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so dito po sa... 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, what we have read is uh, something that the church did in order for people to be uh, restored to what we call fellowship of the church. Because one work of the devil we know is to divide, to destroy, and to conquer. Yan po yung gawain ng kaaway. So if he can cause grief, in the church, he will do that. If he can cause disappointments, he can do that. If there is something that will uh, disrupt anything that we are doing in the church, the, the devil is going to do that because that is his work. That is his nature. Uh, maybe we say that, bakit naman napakasama ng Diablo? Wala siyang magagawa. Diablo siya. He cannot do otherwise. Parang ang Diyos, uh, Jesus Christ cannot commit sin because there is nothing in Him that will be attracted to sin or there is nothing in Him that will make Him capable of committing sin. That is the same with Satan. When Lucifer fell, his nature so changed that there is now nothing in him that will do something good without evil in return, or evil at the uh, back or motive of something good that they're saying. He may quote the scripture, but he will only quote the scripture in order to deceive people. He may appear as an angel of light, but he will only do that in order to pull people into further darkness. So that is the job of the devil. So he came to destroy, to kill, he came to divide, and he came to destroy the people of God. That's why we will continue reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, please. Paul says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So if you're going to look at the background, we know that something happened, First Corinthians, discipline happened, a carnality, a division happened in the church, and there are so many... Uh, uh, what you call uh, sins and mistakes that are happening at the church at Corinth. We can say that Corinth is perhaps the most carnal church that was ever established by the, uh, the Apostle Paul and all of these things. And then Paul says that uh, I also made uh, somewhat of a mistake of being so hard on you and now I'm not going to go there with uh, uh, heaviness and with that aggressiveness. But what I want is this, if you have grieved me, etc., etc. And then he says that the, the, the one who committed mistake, let us forgive, etc., etc. And then he said that, let Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. So Paul is telling them that Satan has many tools that he is using in order to destroy the church. 
in order to render the people of God ineffective in their ministering. Because Satan knew that he cannot do anything about our uh, future anymore because our future is safe in the arms of Jesus. We are eternally saved. We are saved to the uttermost. We have been given eternal life. We have been forgiven. We have been adopted into the family of God. The righteousness of Jesus Christ was given unto us. We're not going to be separated from the love of God. There is nothing that can pull us out of the hand of God. We have the earnest of the Holy Spirit. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Name it. Anything that speaks about security, we have it. Because we are saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And Satan knew that. But sometimes, some Christians do not even know that. But Satan knew that. And he said that I cannot do anything with the future of these people. They are already a, 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 ch a child of God. They belong to the family of God. So what I can do now is to make them ineffective so that there will be no other people that will come to know about Jesus through them. So I am going to use all these tools in order to make these people ineffective so that they're not going to live a victorious life, so that they're going to be mediocre in their Christian life, so that they're not going to love the Lord with all their hearts, so that they're going to be a Christian that is ineffective in their service, if ever that they will serve the Lord, so that nothing will happen in their ministry. So what are these tools that the devil is using? There are so many to name, but we are just going to go through it one by one and in a faster manner, and we'll see where we will end. So let us look at these tools, because the Bible says that we are not ignorant of his devices, meaning to say we know this. If you do not know this, you, see, you should know this. And not only know this, but let us put it in our heart, keep it in our heart, so that whenever the devil is using this tool to destroy us, we know that, that this is the work of the devil, and we will not allow him to have the victory. That's why Paul says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Advantage meaning to say he will get one over us. But if we already knew his devices, then he cannot take advantage of us anymore. Because we already know that this is the work of the enemy and we can make the necessary defense and necessary uh, things to do in order for him not uh, to be, for us not to be affected by the fiery darts that the devil is shooting at us. So what are these things? Number one, disappointment. Disappointment. We have all been disappointed by not getting what we wanted at times. So that is uh, one cause of our disappointment. But to the knowledgeable Christian, all disappointments are God's appointments. Meaning to say, why be disappointed if you can make it an appointment from God in order for us to grow in the faith? And you know, the reason why Satan wanted us to be disappointed is because no Christian can ever be effective if they are disappointed. Actually, the truth of the matter is that if you're disappointed, you cannot even do uh, uh, things in your life well. You try to teach when you're disappointed. It's very hard to teach well when you're disappointed. You try to make a decision when you're disappointed. It is very hard to make a right decision if you are disappointed. You try to uh, look for a job when you're disappointed. You see, during the job interview, you may even get angry at the person interviewing you. Because when you're disappointed, you are not in your proper elements. And the devil knew that. That whenever we are not in our proper element, then he can easily control our minds and dictate to us or suggest to us something that we will do that will further our disappointment. But listen, as Christians, there is a tool that God has given us in order to combat this. And that is Romans 8.28. 
The Bible says that, and we know that all things work together for good. The Bible says we know. The Bible says we are not ignorant of this. The Bible says it is according to our knowledge because it is something that is being preached every Sunday, every Saturday, every Sunday afternoon, every time we have a gathering, every time we open the Word of God, you will see that all things work together for good. You can see that in the life of Joseph. You, you can see how he was sold. You can see how he was hated. You can see how he was imprisoned. You can see how he was uh, falsely accused. But in all of these things, God used him in order to save Israel during the time of famine so that the seed of Jesus Christ, uh, the, the descendant, ascendant of Jesus Christ, will be preserved until the coming of the Savior. Amen. So, Joseph summed it up when he said to his uh, brethren, Ye meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. So, the devil will mean everything for evil, but God can turn the table around and we can profit from the very disappointments that the devil is throwing at us. Amen? Because the Bible says, and we know that all things, all, all, naalala ko na ako kina sa Pampanga, tutulog ako sa tindahan namin sa side ng San Agustin Catholic Church. Gabi, madaling araw, may mga dumadaan, may mga walang pinag-aralan, tulog ka, nakakatok pa. Bibili. Sa araw, alauna yata, alauna, imedya may kumatok. Salwana! Salwana! Sabihin, pabili, pabili. Naalim po nga tanong ako. Sabi ko, ano? Sabi niya, alls. Ha? Tako. Alls. Anong alls? Binuksan yun, ano? Anong alls? Yung alls. Ah, kanya. Ah, holes ka ako. O, biro mo, kapampangan kasi. Pinuyat pa ako. O, order lang, mali pa. O, ano sabi ng Bible? Whole. Amen? Whole things work together for, ano? Good. Ano raw ito? Something that we know. Question, do you know it? Hmm. Yun ang tanong. Alam mo ba? Oh, sagot mo, di ko alam, di ko alam. Oh, alam mo, hindi. Di mga kapatid, tinatanong ko kayo. Alam nyo, hindi. Eh, ba't nakakaganyan ka kung alam mo? Oh, see? Alam mo naman eh. All things work together for good. Something bad happened and you can rejoice. Why? Because you know that it will work for good. And that is something that we know. Why? Because you love God and you are called according to His purpose. So, pagka nadidisappoint ka at nanatili ka ron, nakakalimutan mo yung Romans 8.28 at nawawala sa isipan mo. Because the Bible says, it is very, very clear that all things work together for good. It is very, very clear that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So what if you labor? What if you're having a hard time? What if it seems that nothing is happening? What about it? The Bible says your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hindi nawawala ng kabuluan. Why? Because we have a God who is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. And we know these things. Amen? So anong dahilan bakit tayo nagkakaganito? Anong dahilan bakit ka nagmumukmuk? Anong dahilan bakit nagmumukha kang momo? Yan, yan. Anong tawag doon? Momo, hindi ba? Eh kung ano man siya. Ba't mukha kang ganun? O, eh alam mo naman pala, all things work together for good. Alam mo naman pala, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Alam mo naman pala that God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love. So why will we allow the devil to take advantage of us by allowing him to disappoint us? These appointments are God's appointments for us. Because whatever it is, God can weave it into something 
that will make it better for us. Kaya nga, sabi ng isang librong nabasa ko, okay, bago palang kristyano, kay Warren Wiersbe, ang title ay, The Bumps Are What We Climb On. Yun yung title ng book. Ibig sabihin, yung mga umpok sa daan ay dapat gamitin mo para ikaw ay umakyat, hindi para matisog. Kasi kadalasan, yung mga umbok, pag naglalakad ka, matitisod ka rin eh. Kaya lang, alam mo na merong, merong umbok. Alam mo na merong humps. Abay, apatan mo. Kada apak mo, papataas ka ng patataas. Pataas ka ng pataas. Pataas ka ng pataas. Until such time, you will see eh, in a wider vision by the grace of God. Pero hindi eh. Alam mo na, katitisuran, matitisod ka pa. Eh, natisod ako eh. Eh, ba't nga natisod ka? Eh, hindi ko nakita, akala ko ba light of the word ka? Eh, di gamitin mo ilaw. Kaya ka natitiso, di mo gamit ilaw, di mo nakita na meron pala rong humps, meron palang bumps doon, meron palang umbok. Ay, kaya nga sabi, we are the light of the world. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo ginagamit yung ilaw, kaya ikaw ay natitisod. Alam mo, minsan yan ang problema natin. Ang nakikita natin, katitisuran, at pagkatapos, sisisihin natin yung nakatisod. Ba't di mo din sisihin na sarili mo at natisod ka? Tama, mali. Ang natitisod ay mahinang kristyano. Dahil ang kristyanong matatag, ano sabi ni Paul, none of these things moved me. Hindi ako natitinag dyan. Bakit? Kasi alam ko ang salita ng Diyos at alam ko ang plano ng Diyos sa aking buhay. Kaya huwag kayong matisappoint, eh, man? Ang kamukha ngayon, maglelabor si Jalil. Ang mo, your labor is not in vain. Ako yung na-expect ko, kamukha ko yan. Pag yan lumabas, kamukha ni Jalil, madidisappoint ako. Pero hindi ko hahayaan na yun ay sumira ng buhay ko. Amen? Pag yan naging kahit ni Jalil, disappointed ako. Pero hindi ko hahayaan na yan ay sumira ng buhay ko. Kamukha man niya ni Jalil, kahit man niya ni Jalil, gano'ng mang kasakit sa aking loob, mamahalin ko pa rin yan. Gano'n. Oh. Amen? Maaring gamitin ng jablo yan para madisappoint kami. Kasi, pero magandang lalaki namin, tapos mag... Oh. Amen? Disappointed kayo? Hmm, bahala kayo sa buhay nyo. Number two, discouragement. Yeah, discouragement. So, ang first stage, disappointment. Ang second stage niya, yung discouragement. Kasi pag na-disappoint ka, your disappointment will lead to discouragement. So, pag na-discourage ka, ay lalo ka nang walang magagawa sa Panginoon. Lalo ka nang magagawa. Saan ka nakakita nagsosol winning na discourage? Subo ka mga magsosol winning, discourage ka. Ano sabi rito? Lahat makasalanan. Intindi mo? O, tutul ka rito. Gusto mo, suntukan tayo para malamang makasalanan ka talaga eh. Ninumala ka na. Okay. Good. Ano rin kasalanan? Impyerno. Gusto mo sa impyerno? Ha? Ako, ayoko. Ikaw, gusto mo? Gusto mo, dalin kita ngayon eh. <laughs> oh, hindi ba? Eh, paano ka magsusul winning? Discourage ka. Hindi ba? Pero kung magsisisi ka, ay, huwag na ba? <laughs> Oh, di ba? Ano eh, yung marami kang, ano eh, yung ano tawag doon, marami kang side comment eh. Kasi discourage ka eh. At saka paano ka mag encourage ang taong pumunta ng langit? Eh mukhang impyerno ka. So no Christian who is discouraged can be effective in the ministry. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verses 21 and 28, look at what the Bible says. Tsaka yung discouragement, nakakahawa yung mga kapatid. Sabi ko sa inyo, Behold, the Lord thy God that set the land before thee, go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee, Fear not, neither be discouraged. Listen, there are discouraging things in life. But do not allow them to discourage you. Why? What can you gain out of being discouraged? What can you gain? Nothing. You cannot add one cubit in your life if you are going to be discouraged. Look at verse 28. 
And what happened? Even though they were admonished not to be discouraged. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our heart. Ba't pa kami pupunta? Eh, Dinescourage na kami. Di ba? Where are we going to go up? Our brethren have already discouraged our heart saying, The people is greater and taller than we. You see, they saw the problem. They saw the bigness of the problem. But they did not see the bigness of God. You see, we may have a problem that is so big, but look beyond and you will see our God is bigger than all our problems. Than all our disappointments. Than all our discouragement. That's why as Christians, we must always look beyond. Kasi, ang madalas na malaki yung narito sa harap eh. Ito, malaki sa inyong lahat oh. makikita natin na walang imposible sa Diyos. Nothing is simply impossible with God. The people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. Biro mo talagang kapag ka disappointed ka at na-discouraged ka, exaggerated ka eh. Biro mo, ang padir daw hanggang langit. Eh yung ang tower of Babylon, hindi umabot sa langit eh. And dahil na nag-build nun eh. Ito yung daw pader hanggang langit. Sabi, pati Diyos, hindi makakapasok. Amen. Hanggang langit daw, oh. Yan ang problema. Kaya nga sabi ko, pag discourage ka, huwag kang magdi-decide kasi ang mga desisyon mo, malaking mali. Amen. Dahil lahat sa'yo, matindi, lahat sa'yo mabigat, at lahat sa'yo negatibo. O, sabi niya, walled up to heaven, and moreover, o, dinagdagan pa. Dinagdagan pa. We have seen the sons of the Anakims there. Anakims, these are tall people. These are giants according to the word of God. So all they're saying is that we are no match. We are outnumbered. We are going to be outfought. Actually, in their eyes, we are like grasshoppers. That's what they said. Tino mo discouragement, huh? Pati kung ano yung tingin nila sa'yo, naiimagine mo. Eh, hindi naman sinabi ng mga anakims, para lang kayong grasshoppers ha. Sila nagsabi, in their eyes. Wala naman sinabi yung mga yun. So you tend to pity yourself when you're discouraged. And when you pity yourself, you make yourself so small in a prideful way. Eh, mo, ha? So small in a prideful way. Pastor, hindi ba yung pag small nagpapakumbaba ka? Iba yung nagpapakumbaba. Ibig sabihin, may kakayahan ka at sinasabi mong hindi, sa Diyos lang yan. Ito naman, meron kang Diyos, may kakaya ka sinasabi mong walang magagawa pati ang Diyos. Naglulumiit ka in a prideful way, in a wrong way. And that's what happened to them. So that is why do not allow disappointment leads to discouragement. So when you're disappointed, you claim Romans 8.28, and move out of disappointment because discouragement is knocking at the door. And when discouragement came in, delicado na yan, because number three, despair will be the result. So this is the third stage of disappointment and discouragement. Unless checked, it can destroy your Christian life. This is the time when you decide to quit. This is the time when you said, I had it. This is the time that you will say, Enough is enough. I will just go back to my former life. Mas mabuti pa. Hindi nakita mga Israelites. Hindi ba wala nakapasok na 20 years above? Ano sabi nila nung nasa wilderness sila? They allowed the disappointment to come into their lives. And then because of that, na-discourage sila. Ano sabi nila? Balik na lang kami sa Egypt. 
dito lang, kaya po yata kami din nila rito kasi walang libingan sa Egypt eh. At dito mo kami lahat ililibing sa wilderness. So balik na lang kami doon sa Egypt kasi meron doon spices. Biro mo yun. Ang dahilan nila, yung ano, yung paminta, toyo, eh may toyo talaga yung mga yan, asin, yan ang kanilang mga dahilan, kaya babalik sila doon sa Egypt. Why? Because despair sets in. Ano nangyari sa ibig ng Diyos? Wala nang pag-asa itong mga taong to. Ano dinigler ng Diyos? Walang mahigit na sa uh, walang mas mababa sa 20 anyos ang makakapasok sa Kainaan liban kay Caleb at saka kay Joshua. Lahat mamamatayan sa wilderness. Bakit? Pag despair, wawala ka ng pag-asa. Malalayo ka na, you are going to make a decision that you will regret for the rest of your life. Why? Because if you are in despair, you are forgetting 2 Corinthians 4.8. You remember this. Eh, tandaan niyo dapat itong mga verses na to. Kahit pa paano alam natin kasi ito yung ating ano eh, offense sa to eh. Hindi lang defense pero offense natin eh. We are troubled on every side. Yes, that is true. Why? As I have said yesterday, we are in the enemy territory. So wherever you look, there will be trouble. That wherever you look, there will be war. Wherever you look, there is a battle, there is a fight. So sabi ni Paul, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. See? We are perplexed, but not in despair. So sabi ni Paul, you can be disappointed. Yes, I know that. Sometimes Paul has been disappointed. He was disappointed uh, about uh, Demas when Demas left him. He was disappointed about Mark when John Mark sided with another person. He was disappointed about Peter. When Peter uh, did uh, something that is hypocritical when he was with the Gentiles. But he says, I am not going to allow this disappointment. I am not going to allow this discouragement to turn into despair. Because when I am in despair, then I will turn my back on God and may not serve the Lord anymore. Sabi nga nung isang nag-preach dito, knock down but not knock out. Tinamaan ka na tumbaka tayo. Tinamaan ka na tumbaka tayo. Tinamaan ka na tumbaka tayo. Baka pag na-chempo mo, pag tumba niya, hindi niya makatayo. Amen? Amen? Keep on keeping on. Why? Because once you get into despair, you're not going to fight anymore. You're going to stop. And something that we need to be reminded of that no matter how hard the battle may be, we are sure to win the war because of the Lord. For faith is the victory. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Amen? Ang ganda pag alam natin itong mga verses na ito, no? At dumarating ito sa ating buhay. At yung parang sabi ng Diablo, wala, suko ka na. Bigla, bigla, sasabihin mo sa kanya, Oy, I may be perplexed. But I am not in despair. I know that I am going to win the fight. This fight may tarry. This fight may go longer. This fight may stay for a long, long time. But I am not going to be defeated. Why? Because I was already promised a victory by God. And I am fighting for victory. And that is what I am. Because I am ano, more than conquerors. Yun talaga yung dapat na pangalan eh. More than conquerors. Kaya hindi ka matatalo, lagi kang first. Amen. If you are more than conqueror by the grace of God. So that's why you do not allow this despair to come into your life. To despair is to forget that God is working in our lives. You see, when something is in the works, the process may not seem good. Do you understand that? Have you seen a, uh, a how they make the pots? Especially th those ones that they put on display. If you're going to look at the process, it's very hard. They're going to break down the clay. They're going to mold it and they will find some impurities. They're going to destroy it again, remove the impurities and work on the process again. And then if they will again find some impurities, they will remove it destroy the whole lump and then work on it again. 
And then after it was, it was finished, they're going to put it under the sun. And if it will crack, then they have to do it again. And if it will crack, they're going to put it in an oven. And if it will crack, then they'll do it again. If it will not crack, and they see that it is good, then that's the only time that they're going to paint it. And that they're going to display it later on. That is the same thing. God is still working on us. So if there are things that may seem uncomfortable, it is just a process of God molding us into what He wanted us to be. A trophy for Him sometime in the future. Amen? So that is why we need to keep on keeping on. We should not give up. There is no place for giving up. Why? Because time is short. The Bible says redeeming the time because the days are evil. Work while it is day for the night cometh when no man can work. So you see, what we are going to do here or we are doing here no matter how hard it is, it is but for a moment. And don't you ever forget that the Bible says weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Amen? May katapusan ho ito. Sabihin mo nang ikaw na ang pinaka hindi ah, yung, yung pinaka ayaw kasing gamitin yung term. Sabihin mo nang halimbawa, ikaw na yung hindi pinaka mapalad na tao sa buong mundo. Yung mga nangyayari sa'yo, parang series of unfortunate events. It doesn't matter. Because when you die, you will be in heaven together with God. And there are things that were prepared for us by God that have not, uh, that ear have not heard nor I seen. It's going to, and it, they are reserved for us over there in heaven. So do not be in despair. Yes, this disappointments will come. Yes, we will be disappointed. But remember Romans 8.28, that all things work together for good. Yes, we will be discouraged, but do not be discouraged for a long time. You see, the reason why you're discouraged is because you may have seen something that your faith may not like. But then again, if you're going to review your faith, you are going to see that God is greater than all. And then it can get you out of discouragement because when discouragement comes and you linger, then despair will come in. And when despair happens, then you may turn your back on God and not serve Him anymore. Number four, doubt. Doubt. If Satan cannot disappoint you, if he cannot discourage you, if he cannot put you in despair, then he will put doubt in your heart. And listen to me. All of us at one time doubted God. I remember when I was in Bible school, that's the time that I doubted my salvation. I said, am I really safe? Is there really a heaven? Is there really a hell? Does God really exist? I questioned that. I was crying that night. The devil is really attacking me that night. And I have a big time doubt in my life. And then I realized that the devil is there. And then I realized that the devil is attacking my faith in the Lord. And he became successful because I really doubted my very salvation. So what I did is because he was there, I said, okay, Satan, you are here. Okay, Satan, you made me doubt my salvation, but listen to me. I am going to repent of my sin right this very moment, and I'm going to accept Jesus as my Savior right this very moment, and you are my witness. And I did that. So whenever Satan will put doubt in my heart, I will tell him, stop, you were there when I made that decision. And then it never bothered me since. Why? Because I am sure that I was forgiven, I am sure that I am now a child of God. Amen? Why? Eh kasi, sabihin sa akin, save ka ba? Oo, sino testigo? Tanungin mo, Jablo. Ando siya nung gabi, na i-reassure ko yung aking pananampalataya sa Panginoon. Amen? So Satan attacked Eve in the Garden of Eden with doubt. By getting her to doubt God's word. He said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. That is Genesis 3.1. You see, the devil, as I have said a while ago, will even use the very word of God to instill doubt in our hearts. And listen to me, 
Don't you know that the devil has been very, very successful in using the Bible to instill doubt in the hearts of people? You see, we are divided about Calvinism and being a biblicist. We are divided about local church and universal church. We are divided about so many issues that are in the Word of God. Do you know why? Because Satan used the Word of God in order to instill doubt in our hearts and in our minds. So he will use, when it comes to the devil, no holds barred. He will use everything, including the kitchen sink, in order to destroy us. Gagamitin niya lahat. Asawa mo, anak mo, magulang mo, trabaho mo, pera, kaibigan mo, lahat gagamitin ng Diablo. Just to destroy you. And he will even use the word of God in order to instilled out in our hearts. Tandaan nyo kung gano'ng kalakas ang loob ng Diablo. He used the word of God against God. <laughs> when he's tempting the Lord Jesus Christ, he quoted from the book of Psalms. Of course, he will always misquote it. Actually, what Satan told Dave, Eve is a misquotation. Because what he said here is that, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And then he says, and then the, uh, Eve, because he entertained the devil, he, she added, even if I touch it, then I am going to die. So he used the word of God in order to instill doubt in the heart of Eve and in the heart of every Christian. And to doubt is to forget to pray and to trust God. When you doubt, you do not trust God and you are not into praying. Or even when you pray, you pray amiss or without faith. Because that is the other side of doubting. Look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 8. 1 Timothy 2, 8. I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Amen? Amen? That's why we have the saying, why doubt when you can pray? And why pray if you doubt? Praying and doubting cannot go together. They are oxymoron. You cannot put them in the same sentence. I am going to pray, Lord, because I doubt you. You cannot do that. When you pray, it means that you trust God. So when you doubt, it means that you cannot pray with faith because it shows that you do not trust the very object of your prayer. That is why when doubt comes, you go to your knees and pray to God and ask God to remove that doubt in your heart and replace it with faith and belief in God. You see, when you are in doubt and in this uh, a point of disbelief, you cannot do anything. And even God cannot do anything for you if you are doubting. Because you know what the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, what the Bible says? And he did no miracle there because of their unbelief. You see, God is a miracle working God, but he will not perform a miracle because you doubt him, because you do not believe him. And that is something that the devil knew. Because as I have told you, the devil knows the Bible. You know the sad thing is this. The devil knows more of the Bible than, all, than we all are. And that is sad. That's why the devil can even use our very own weapon to destroy us. Ladies and gentlemen, if we are Christians, we need to be saturated by the word of God. We should not allow the devil to use our very own weapon against us. You know in the military... You do not allow your enemy to get your weapon. You protect it with your life. The same thing with us. We do not allow the devil to get our Bible. We protect it with our life. And most especially, we will not allow him to use it against us because we must be skillful in using the Word of God. And it will only happen if you will put much diligence in studying the Word of God. So how can, this, how can we achieve that kind of skill if we read a verse or two every day or sometimes every week or sometimes every month we prepare our lessons for teaching and that is good because you are teachers but you do not prepare your lesson for life 
so that the devil will not take an advantage of us. You see, sometimes we do not know our priority. That's why our diligence is in the wrong objects. It should be on the right priority. If we're going to be diligent studying the word of God, then the Bible says we will not be ashamed because our foundation is sure. And that foundation is the word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is why doubt can only come in if we are ignorant of the word of God. That's why you are easily swayed by every wind of doctrine. May nagturo na nawawala ang kaligtasan. Oo nga ano. Patay. May nagturo na ang church ay universal. Oo nga ano. May nagturo ng first fruits. Oo nga ano. May nagturo na hindi pwedeng i-transfer ang membership kahit nakailan. Oo nga ano. Bakit? Hindi mo ng word of God. Wala kang, o oh, sige, pakita mo sa Bible. Wala kang maipakita. Wala nga sa Bible. Kapatid, makinig ka. Hindi porket hindi mo na ipakita, ibig sabihin wala sa Bible. Ang ibig sabihin lang, hindi mo nakita. Kaya hindi mo maipakita. Kasi kung nakita mo, ipapakita mo. At pag naipakita mo, sasabihin mo, kita mo. Di ba? Eh, hindi mo kita. So walang kita. Noon, ang hamon, ganito. Sabi niya, sige nga, pakita nga ninyo sa Bible na may transfer ng membership. Ang lalakas ng loob nila. Eh, walang makasagot eh. Walang makapagpakita. Eh, nung pinag-aralan natin, nakita natin. Si Pablo pala, nag-transfer ng membership. Si Apollos pala, nag-transfer ng membership. Oh, nakita natin. So, ngayon, pinakita natin. Oh, ano sabi nila? Hindi ko pa rin kita. Kasi ayaw nilang tignan. Why? It is in the Word of God. So, the only reason why doubt will come into your heart is if you are ignorant of the Word of God. And the devil knew that. Hindi nyo ba alam na alam ng Diablo kung hindi ka nagbabasa ng Bible? Eh, the all-knowing ang Diablo. Hindi all-knowing ang Diablo. Magaling lang ang kanyang network. Centralize ang reporting. O yung Cedric, hindi nagbasa ng Bible. Ah, sige, dalihin mo. O yung ano, yung Darwin. Busy sa paggawa ng grades, hindi nakapanalangin. O sige, dalihin mo, mahina ngayon yan. Hmm. O yung Lua, nanood na naman ng Korean telenovela. O sige, dalihin mo, mahina ngayon yan, emotional yan. Pakitahan mo ng kabalyero yan. Hmm. Di ba? Ganun mangyayari. Kasi, alam ng Diablo, meron siya magandang network. Hindi nga siya all-knowing, pero ang dali niyang malaman lahat. Kasi maganda yung kanyang sistema. Sa reporting lahat, nire-report sa kanya. Kaya alam niya nangyayari. Ang, ang Diablo, hindi mababasa isip natin, pero nababasa niya ang body language natin. Kita mo, kahit na ikaw lang, hindi naman tao, pag nakaganon, ano yun? May hika. Hindi ba? Kasi... Ganun na paginga, may hika yun. O, oh, see? Ganun na paginga, ano? Galit, ang bira naman kayo. Galit, ah, ganun nga eh. Ano naman basta sa mga isun sa mga daan to? Oh? So, doubt. He is going to use that in order to make us ineffective. And then when doubt comes, what will be the natural progression? Number five, disbelief or unbelief. When you doubt, then you are not going to believe. So disbelief or unbelief is the final form of doubt. Look at Genesis 3, 4 and 5. Diyan mo nangyari dito sa Hebrews 3, 4 and 5. Eh, sa Genesis 3, 4 and 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Sabi ng Diyos, ye shall surely die. Eh, in-entertain niya. Eh, nang mahirap pag nag-entertain ka ng mali aayong ka na later on. That is why the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Because once you entertain the unbelievers, there is a possibility that you will be persuaded. Bakit, Pastor? Kasi mga kapatid, ang mga unbelievers, magaling mambola. Unbeliever nga eh. Ipapangako sa iyo niyan lahat. Pipitasan ko ang mga buntala sa langit. 
at ilalagay ko sa iyong leeg na parang mga kwintas. Isipin mo, gaalam mo ba kung gaano kalaki ang isang bituin para ilagay sa leeg mo at ikwintas sa iyo? Sabi pa, ang iyong mukha'y kasing kinis ng liwanag ng buwan. Eh, baku-baku ang mukha ng buwan. Bubulain ka niyan lahat. Sasabihin sa iyo. Naalala ko noong nasa Bicol ako, bagong punta ako ron, nagbabakas yung kami. Nagpunta ako sa may tindahan, eh, may nagtitindang babae, maganda. Paano yung inom ko ng Coke? Sabi ko, ano sa Bicol yung maganda? Sabi niya, magayon. Oh, magayon. Sabi ko, alam mo, magayon ka. Ah, di ba? No? <laughs> Tapos, eh, maputi, makinis ang balat eh. Sabi ko, ano naman yung makinis? Sabi niya, makanos. Oh, kako, ang kinis mo ay makanos. Kakong ganun. Yung pala yung makanos, pangit. Niloko ko ng babae. <laughs> Nung may nakita ako, sabi ko, uy, makanos ka. Kakong ganun. Ay, ganun na ganun sa akin yung mga tao. Yung pala, eh, iba yung ano, translation na ano, ibinigay sa akin. Pero kasi nga, kasi bulero ka na, bola ka. So, ganun na mga unbelievers eh. Kaya huwag kang makikinig. Kita mo, nakinig si Eve sa Diablo. Oh, eh kung di siya, kung no, ano yung Diablo, kung ginamit yung Word of God, kung alam niya lalagay sa nandaw, iniwan niya. Huwag kita po sa usap. Eh hindi, nakipag-usap ka eh. Ay, naku, pasensya na. Hindi ako nakikipag-usap sa hindi kama na ng palataya eh. Nakipag-usap ka na nga eh. Hindi ko pa nakikipag-usap. Huwag kong usapin. Ye shall not surely die. For God that know that in the day you eat thereof. You see, the devil will be very subtle in stealing doubt into your heart. Once doubt is in your heart, is going to be very brave and very bold to not only give you doubt, but to make you doubt even the very person who loves you so much. For God that know that in the day ye eat thereof, you know, your God is holding something back. Your God is not giving you the best. Your God is not telling you the truth. And I, the devil, will tell you the truth. And if you listen, you are the most stupid person in the world. Amen? Diablo na nga, pakikinggan mo. Sabi nyo, Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Don't you know that it is not God's intention for His creation to know evil? That's not God's intention. It is not God's intention that there will be a sepulcher in the Garden of Eden. It is not God's intention that there is going to be a hospital. It is not God's intention that there is going to be jails all around the world. Why? He wanted man to live happily ever after. But when they listened to the devil, it destroyed everything. And what is happening now, all the infirmities that we experience is a result of our sin. And then the devil said, verse number 5 na yan. So this belief, he is going to Put that into your heart because a Christian who will not believe in God anymore cannot be an effective Christian and a Christian that will not give glory to God. And this is a, the kind of a Christian who forgot Hebrews chapter 3 verse number 12. Hebrews 3 12. This is what the Bible says. Take heed. Brethren, lest there be in any of you. You see, you can be a Christian, but this can be in you. You understand, amen? Because he said, take heed, brethren. He's talking to a person with the same quality of life that he has. With the same status that he has. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. You see, unbelief is evil. Because how can you not believe God? How can you doubt God? How can you even entertain the thought that God 
cannot be good all the time. That there are times when God is going to shortchange you and is not going to give the best for you. Listen to me. No matter what happens, it is always God's best for us. As we have said, all things work together for you, uh, for good. An evil art of unbelief in departing from the living God. Can I depart from God? Yes, Demas forsook Paul. Even Thomas doubted. But it's good. He, he did not really come to the point of unbelief that he turned his back on God continually and for the rest of his life. So remember that unbelief is something that is evil and you should not allow that to come into your heart. Amen? Number six is destruction. Destruction. We're almost, uh, it's almost time. Destruction. One can be sidetracked from God's perfect will by many, many things in this world. You see, God has a perfect will for us. We studied that yesterday, amen? We, we saw that there are different phases that a Christian will undergo as he's growing in the Lord. Uh, those process may make him or break him. What is the first phase? If you're listening, what is the first phase? Salvation. First, you will be saved. Because there is only one will of God to all un unbelievers, and that is for them to be saved. And if they will not be saved, then there is no other will for God in their lives, except they will be damned. Because they rejected Jesus Christ. Number two, the second phase will be trials and tribulations. So it will come. When trials and tribulations come, then God will use this in order to make your faith stronger. But if you are not well grounded and rooted up into the word of God, it can give a negative effect in your life. Number three, the third phase will be your challenge or making the decision. Because of phase two that you have experienced, are you going to quit? Or are you going to continue? So because you saw that God is good, you saw the promises of God in your life, you made the decision to continue, and now you will go to phase four. What is phase four? You are going to be victorious. More than conqueror, you will understand that our life is a victorious kind of life. That we cannot be defeated by the devil no matter what happens. And listen, the devil will use destruction to keep your mind away from that. And he will offer you the things of this world. Don't you know that he did that very thing to the Lord Jesus Christ? The Lord Jesus Christ knew the reason why he came. He came to die on the cross in order to uh, save us from our sins. In order to uh, uh, redeem us from our sins. And that is the... Uh, the, the thing that the Lord Jesus Christ should do. He must be obedient even unto the death of the cross. But when the devil tempted him, he put him in a, a high place and he showed him uh, the word. And he said, kneel down and worship me and I am going to give you all of this. You see, he's trying to distract the Lord Jesus Christ. He's trying to make it easier for him, but there is always a sinister plan whenever the devil is involved. Tandaan nyo, pag ang Diablo ang nagpakana, siguradong may masama. Nabalak yan. Hindi mag-e-end sa kabutihan ang anumang bagay na ginagawa ng Diablo sa buhay mo at sa buhay ko. Amen? So yun ang gagawin niya. And we can be sidetracked in this world. God has a perfect will for us and I know that will is for us to serve God and love God with all our hearts. The Bible says that ye uh, give your bodies a living, uh, offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. How much of us must be given to God? All of us must be given to God. He must be Lord of all or not at all. That is God's perfect will for our lives. But the devil will use destruction. He will use our family to distract us. Miyak yung anak mo para wala nang makain. Nagtatanong anak mo, magiging ano ba ako pag laki ko? Meron ba akong magandang kinabukasan? Meron bang magandang edukasyon? Ayan, madidistract ka na ngayon. At imbis na paglingkuran mo ang Diyos, ang gagawin mo ay mag-amas ng yaman para sa kapag-
pagpapakanan ng iyong pamilya. Which is hindi sana masama. Pero ang sabi ng Bible, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all. Uy. All. Ano? All these things shall be added unto you. Eh hindi. Ano tayo? Seek first all things and the kingdom of God shall be added unto you. Yan tayo. Kaya, nakakatakot ngayon ang ipinipreach prosperity gospel. Pinapakita sa iyo na ang kalooban ng Diyos ay umaman ka. Sabi pa nga nung preacher, If you are not rich, then you are not right with God. Sabi ko, kawawa yung taga Macedonian. Puro mahirap, deep poverty. But they gave beyond their power and yet, they are not right with God. Kasi alam niyo mga kapatid, ang final authority sa panahon natin ngayon ay human reasoning. Ito kasi ang pinakain eh. Oh. God owns everything. Yes, we came from God. The Lord Jesus Christ said, He came to give us an abundant life. Sabi na, ano yung abundant? Meaning to say, something that is overwhelming, something that is more than normal. Abundant. Something that is overflowing. So, God wanted us to be rich. Why? Because our Father is rich. So, we are the skilled men. Must also be rich. We as His children must also be rich. Di ba? Yan ang sasabihin. So ngayon, sasabihin na, what is the key to God's riches? Malachi chapter 3. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there be no room enough to receive it. Sasabihin nila, it is more blessed to give than to receive. At sasabihin nila, give and it shall be given unto you. God will give you more than what you have given Him. So, na-set up na, na-mindset ka na. Ito na ngayon. Kapatid, kung magbibigay ka, damihan mo. Parang balik ng Diyos, mas marami. At pag binigyan ka ng marami ng Diyos, magbigay ka uli ng mas marami. Parang ibalik pa sa'yo ay mas marami. Aba kapatid, sure business ito. Sure business ito. Bakit? Kung meron ako $100, bigay ko na lahat. Bakit? Alam ko naman, ibabalik eh. Nang higit pa. Binalik niyang 1,000. O, bibigay ko rin yung 1,000. Bakit? Ibabalik niya ng 10,000. Ibibigay ko rin yung 10,000 until such time na mayamang-mayaman na ako, hindi ko na kailangan ng Diyos. Amen? Yun na yung minainset sa atin. Kaya ngayon, imbis na mag-soul winning, kaya ngayon, imbis na maglingkod sa Diyos, kaya ngayon, imbis na talikura ng lahat, katulad ng mga apos, uh, apostol noong unang panahon, and they left all, they straightway left all, and followed him, and when they followed him, they have neither a script, they have neither money, but they went all around preaching the word of God. But now that is not true anymore. Why? Because you need to be rich, you need to be a person with faith, and if you have faith, you will be rich, and if you will prosper, then that's the time that you can serve God. Ladies and gentlemen, serving God, it's not only out of prosperity nor poverty. Serving God is God's will for all His people. Ganun yun. Kaya mayaman ka, kaya mahirap ka. At hindi mo kailangan maging mayaman para maglingkod sa Diyos. Ang totoo, karamihan na naglingkod sa Diyos sa Bible, hindi man mayaman. May mayaman nga gustong sumunod, hindi na iwan yung yaman, hindi nakasunod. Tama mali. Yung rich young ruler, Umalis siya, lulugulugo siya, malungkot siya. Why? Because he trusted in riches more than God. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ who says, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Eh yun nga yung very thing that bring more people to hell. And then after you got saved, that will be the very thing that you're going to amass or to try to get in your life. Ano sabi ng Bible? They that will be rich fall into what? Diverse temptations. Yung yaman nga ang nagdudulot ng napakalaking kanungkutan at tukso. Why? The Bible says, For the love of money 
is the root. The root. Of all evil. So, what is being preached in our pulpit today is to love money. Pretending that you are loving God. Because they said if you will give God more, then God will give you more. Question, what is the motivation? Is it God or the more? Hmm. Ano motivation? Yung more. Bakit? Kasi hindi naman kailangan ng Diyos yung yaman mo eh. Kanya yun eh, naalala yun. This is our stewardship month. And I preach about stewardship. Ano yung first principle? God owns everything. He owns everything. He created this world and all that are in this world. He created the universe. We belong to Him. So God has no need of anything that we can give Him because it belongs to Him. What God needs is not what we can give Him but our faithfulness to Him. Yun ang iniingi ng Diyos. Kaya ang stewardship, it is a show of faithfulness and loyalty to God. Hindi yung naibibigay mo. Kaya nga ang pinakikita sa atin ngayon, palakihan ng bigay, hindi ho ang gusto ng Diyos patapatan sa pagiging katiwala. Ngayon, pagka giver ka, sikat ka sa simbahan, kahit karnal ka. Nakakalungkot. Naalala ko nang bago akong save, pinuntahan ko agad ang magulang ko sa naga kasi gusto ko mawitnessan ng mother ko. E yung pala, nag a siya sa isang church na ang pangalan ay Word for the World Fellowship. Doon pa ginagawa sa Crown Hotel, sa taas. So, umatend ako. Nung kalagitnaan, may nag-testimony. Isang lalaki, nakapolong puti, long sleeves, nakanektay, may bulsa rito, tapos aninag mo yung ano, Malboro. Sabi ko, ma, sino nagtetestimony niyo? Bakit may sigarilyo? Ay, ano yan eh, mayaman kasing member dito, malakas magbigay yan eh. So ibig sabihin dahil mayaman, malakas magbigay, pwede na magtestimony kahit na may malborong nakalagay dito. Kasi, yun ngayon eh, kapag ka mayaman ka at gumagawa ka ng kasalanan, pag si pastor nag-preach, inisa-isa kasalanan, lalaktawan yung kasalanan mo. Bakit baka ma-offend at baka maghanap ng ibang simbahan. Ano yon? Destruction. Amen? The devil is going to use destruction in order for you not to perform the perfect will of God, but to compromise in order for you to gain from what the devil is actually trying to offer us. He will use material things of this world he will use people. He will use your family. He will use everything that can make us feel good so that we are going to be distracted on the main thing. And that is glorifying God in our lives. And these are only some of the tools of the devil. So we only cover six. And I have here 18. So we're going to continue. Uh, I don't know if we will continue in our worship service or if we will continue this uh, next Sunday. But we need to know these things because, again, let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. If we do not know, know these things, then this is what will happen. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant, amen, of his devices. The only way that the devil can get advantage of you is if you are ignorant of his devices. So we need to know this. We need to know this by heart so that we will not be taken advantage of by the devil. Shall we stand up, please? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the things that we have studied today regarding the tools that the devil is using in order to